I would give an up and coming female business leader advice that I've received from mentors myself over the years. And the first one would be to always remember to put your principles before profit, especially the principles of integrity and character. The advice that I would give female business leaders is to just do it. You know, I started the company at 22 years old and I didn't care that I look I look like I'm 16. I and mean, I was going up against, you know, folks that were much older than me and, you know, in a male dominated industry. And, uh, you know, we beat out our competition many times. Our networks are so critical for our success and often even solace in our failures that I think that cultivating networks of other women, of supportive men, um, are really critical for emerging female leaders. I find that a lot of young people today look at others and compare their lives and where they should be. Life and success is a journey, it's not a destination. So find your passion, follow your heart, and enjoy the journey. Go out and learn a little bit about human resources, learn about marketing, learn about finance, understand operations, even construction in today's day and age. And that way you have a wealth of knowledge that you can assimilate things regardless of the situation you're put in. You do have a background or a base to build off of. Your actions and your success will speak for themselves because there are struggles for women in the workplace. And instead of taking on those challenges, just be who you are and be it well and your reputation and your your successes will speak for themselves. Maxine is really passionate about women's issues. She's very passionate about helping women, helping women get on their feet. We've established a scholarship fund to help women who have placed their children for adoption. So she's just really all about helping other women. The biggest thing that I'm working on right now is launching a new charter high school. It's called the Delaware STEM Academy. It is a ton of work, a super heavy lift, but we're so excited about it. I'm working with a group of business people. What's really exciting about this is the students that want to come to our school. In addition to helping to find solutions for employees, I believe service is important outside of work as well. I sit on numerous nonprofit boards, I talk at local universities and trade shows, and I also serve on the board of another for-profit business. Uh, I think the best piece of advice I ever received was from my grandmother, and she had said to me, not everybody's gonna be your cup of tea. So be nice to whoever you meet, be respectful of them. You have no idea where they're coming from or what's happening in their world or when you're gonna see them again, and the best thing to have is a good impression. To describe my leadership style, it would be teamwork. I believe that, you know, Teamwork makes the dream work <laughs> and ultimately, you know, be a part of the team and make sure that, you know, everyone is on the same playing field. People would be surprised to know that I was dyslexic in school and I was incredibly embarrassed by that and I hid all through high school. And But yet I managed to go to college, do rather well, get a master's degree. And now when I see children struggling to learn to read, it's really more touching for me to come forward and talk about it. I started my career as a college professor in a very narrow academic field of philosophy and I found that the skills of research and teaching are really transferable skills and that they're leadership skills too. At 56 years old, after beating thyroid cancer and losing 65 pounds, I was the oldest woman ever to win the title of Mrs. Pennsylvania International. And I am currently the 2016 Pennsylvania USA Ambassador Ms. When a project comes up, we all sit down and kind of think about what's the what items we should suggest to the customer to use and I love to hear their creative ideas and just putting together a nice program for our clients. When you're an organizational leader, you look at process and procedure. You try to be effective and efficient, as I said. And oftentimes, people will see that as criticism or nitpicking until you involve them in that. And then when you get more compliments the next time, you realize it wasn't criticism, but it was collaboration and enthusiasm to be better than we can be. All of the things that I've learned about running a business have come either from reading business books or leadership books, and I have uh, many shelves full of these books, or from facing tough situations myself and figuring out how to work through them. I admire Maxine, who's my mother, because she created this incredible thing, this vision of hers that she started from the basement of our home, and it just keeps growing. And she's helped so many people and so many families, and she's touched so many lives. I've been an entrepreneur for 35 years, so I do have that business background. I am a business education teacher by trade, but it's just amazing that when someone finds their passion, 
how much that can really put you in the driver's seat and make real successes in life. We have opportunities our mothers and grandmothers before us didn't have. If we want to see an inclusive business society for our daughters, we need to make sure that we make change so that way gender equality is seen as a virtue, not as a challenge.